Well, welcome back to the log cabin. It's the morning after the big snow, and I like to get my tea ready for us. We'll go out and do our chores, and when we come back from the cold, then the tea is ready to go, and we'll have a nice cup of warm chocolate tea. Oh, man, it's the first snow. Hey, come on, baby. Oh, Molly likes it. Yay! Who wants breakfast? Who wants tea? Yeah, we like our breakfast. All right, let's get it. Patiently waiting. Okay, that, I'm just gonna leave that here for now. Their first experience with cow tongue. <laughs> Sit. Let's see Sit. if Maggie likes it. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Yeah, I think we were more worried about the cow tongue than they were. <laughs> they wolfed it right down. Yeah, All right, let's go check it. on everybody. Yeah, it's a winter wonderland. First up's gonna be the chickens. You love this. Ha! Let's see what happens here. Everyone's all snugly warm. Yes, Mr. Turkey, I hear you. It stays really warm in there too. I hear ya. Do some fixing on my chicken coop, I see. Are you guys gonna come out? All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's watch the hodgepodge. Hello? Anybody there? You guys coming out? What do you think? Hello? Anybody in there? Be free. Hello? Ha! All right, I guess we'll go uh, see the horses. <laughs> oh, the water stay put a grape on the water. Good morning, sir. One scoop for you. Got a runaway chicken in the big barn. Somebody didn't, somebody didn't make it to the coop last night. Ha! Runaway rooster, he got stuck in the barn last night. I gotta put him back. <laughs> Give the sheep some uh, hay. Make sure they got water. Come on. Woo. Yeah. Good stuff. I got this uh, extra trough that caught a hole. I'll use this for a little wintertime feeder for some square bales for the horses. They play with it out here. I just left it out here for them and they push it around the pastures and they like it. So I see? Like now we yeah. just drop some hay in there. Perfect. I like that. Oh, Mrs. Turkey, are you glad to see us? She wants her food. Oh, Maggie. No chasing. There's the coaches. Bye, guys. Yeah, Mrs. Turkey. Just, some of you guys thought maybe she was alone, but we have the uh, coaches are in here with her. And right now, we're going to give her a little breakfast and uh, make sure she's got some food on this snowy day. Alright. 
Stacy took the puppy back home. Give the sheep some hay and some water. And then we'll try out the new horse thing. I gotta give the sheep some water, just like you like water, they like water too. Oh man. Go get the hay while I'm waiting. Keep it off the ground for them. Should work out great. Some water for you. your chores on another level of uh, homesteading you got to make sure everybody's fed and watered definitely this time you have to check them a few times I can't even talk my face is cold <laughs> we have to make sure and check them you know because the water freezes so quick now I'm gonna get the tea warmed up just a little bit we were out there a little longer than we thought I'm gonna put another log in and we'll get our tea out there. Good time for some hot tea in the morning. Tea time with you guys. So I guess we'll just finish out this uh, thing talking about chores in the homestead snow. Because one thing is you guys got to consider is your location where you want to set up a homestead or live off grid, how well you can handle the elements. Yeah, we have a friend and she'll be speaking at the Homesteading Life Conference, Flower to Me, and they live up in Vermont and they've had, they're like whacked in, they have so much snow. So they have a lot of snow and they have a lot of um, things they have to deal with. You know, like she keeps her chickens in. I mean, they're in the coop for a long time because there's so much snow. Yeah, so, so a lot of times we talk here about aging in place and that's a lot of the reasons why we show you guys, you know, you want your chicken coops and your sheep and all your animals kind of close to your main living quarters. So that way you're not going, you know, we have 11 acres. I don't want something 10 acres away that I have to go manage. So we keep all of our animals really close so we can keep an eye on them. And so when we get older, it'll be a lot easier for us for to manage the chores. And then as we get even older, we'll be able to just start letting maybe some sheep go and just raise chickens and then go from 50 chickens down to maybe 10 chickens. So you just start making those adjustments as you get older but it also is a huge win for this kind of weather yeah and i do i really like it we've had so much i think this is like the past couple years the wind has been crazy <laughs> i don't like the wind we had a, it was actually a beautiful snow yeah it was very nice very peaceful and i like snow like that but when you have like blizzard conditions and those bomb cyclones i don't like those but this is great it could snow all the time i really enjoy it it's nice and peaceful even if you get in the truck and drive down the gravel roads i mean it's just so beautiful yeah it makes it the trees are covered you know it's postcard perfect out there and it's sound and just the sound 
you know when you go outside and there and there's snow out there there's a different sound like in the woods i love it yeah you can hear i think it's like uh like when you're in a room when you put the stuff on the walls that everything's just more muffled and more solitude more serenity i don't know it just looks really cool one time this is funny i thought of something in third grade i had a teacher she, he was a music teacher and he had everyone bring egg cartons and we egg cartoned our whole classroom so we could have kind of that you know sound yeah that muffly thing yeah yeah sound deafening or whatever that's kind of like what it is out there you can hear everything it's just a very and it's so quiet because no one's milling about so like you just hear nothing it's just quiet the bird maybe you guys saw how those chickens ran right out of the coop <laughs> they're not even outside even yet so so we'll go ahead a little bit later today i'll go out there and i'll shovel around the area because some of them may want to come out a little later yeah we do keep keep it cleaned up around there and another thing too um that you guys often ask is chickens and the cold do they need heat lamps do they gotta stay warm should you go put a stove out there no as a matter of fact, chickens are very resilient to cold weather. And certain breeds. Certain, certain breeds. Certain, certain breeds. breeds. Yeah, because those little foofy chickens that we have, <laughs> those were made more for like, you know, South America. So they cannot handle the cold like, say, a barred rock or a um, Rhode Island red. Those are bred in these conditions. So that's another thing to think about when you guys are setting up your homestead is getting conducive animals to your geographical location. We did a lot of research when we were looking into our chickens and we wanted to get dual purpose birds that could handle the heat and humidity as well as the winter. Cause it, you know, when you go into our chicken coop, I mean, it's sort of like you went into the heat of the house. I mean, it's warm in there, the yeah. water stays good you know yeah. it didn't freeze because they're in there and they produce so many btus you know they're all huddling together and it's much warmer in there yeah and make sure you guys leave just a little crack of, on the window that you have in your chicken house because you want to let that humidity escape you don't want to keep it airtight in there because it gets really it will get really moist in there yeah, yeah. and it's, it yeah. just cause bad conditions uh for your birds so it's good stuff man we're gonna see how long this melts off i think we got about five six inches so that's just gonna <laughs> totally stop my project I'm gonna keep on putting the uh, wood or the rock excuse me inside of the um, root cellar and other than that it's just gonna be kind of lazy days around here I think Stacy's got some cool stuff to show you guys how to make stuff so stay tuned for those videos and I'm cause... gonna purge because you know what we live in a small house yeah. so I keep telling them I need to go upstairs it's crazy you know you try it we got rid of everything and it's amazing how you just like accumulate things so it's it's heavy on my heart here. I have to get rid of a bunch of stuff upstairs and just kind of that we have around here, you know, give it to donate it and get rid of some of the stuff because we're starting to accumulate too much and it's I don't want too much stuff again. If you guys don't purge ever, at least once a year at the end of the year, maybe you should go through your houses and do an audit. It can really help you set up your next year to be winning and to have a better attitude and to just feel better. So we're just challenging you guys at the end of this video, look around your house and say, yeah, I think I'm going to purge some stuff at the end of this year and, and take Doug and Stacy's advice so I can feel better for 2020. So leave a comment on what you're going to purge. What yeah. How to get rid of that's been heavy on your heart that you're like, I don't need this or why is it, why do I have this? And you keep or looking at clothes, it. clothes? Are you going to donate a bunch of clothes? I mean, how many clothes do you guys get? Yeah. So let us know. That's right. Comments. Well, hopefully you guys like this little jaunt around the homestead and our little chocolate tea tat chat stay tuned guys we got some information coming out with the chocolate tea i'm trying to get our website up and going um you guys got like about oh, 10 days two weeks left if you want to go to the homesteading life conference the tickets are the cheapest that they'll ever be right now until december 30th 2019 then the prices go up and we're probably more than halfway sold out already and if you wanted to ride the riverboat, which is a huge uh, blast for everybody, we go on a riverboat cruise up and down the river, but it's limited seating, just like the conference. Only about half of the attendees are able to attend the riverboat ride. So make sure if you're gonna attend that, that you do get your tickets and get them at the link provided in the first comment under this video. Other than that, uh, Stacy's gonna whip up something. I guess you'll see that on the next video. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be yummy. Yeah, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. See ya.